Ebony, it's going to be we great. <laughs> I reckon we should start with congratulating Rachel on an awesome fight because oh, I'm still you. pumped about that fight. I've watched it a few times. Like, just I thought it was a good fight, you know. And um, I think, and like even like I said, it's a fight that I can watch again, you know. So well done. I'm like, you know, I never had a doubt. Um, you know that. Um, I've always always supported you, anyways, um, for a while now. But um, yeah, congratulations because you're part of that. This whole three weeks of fight camp, uh, you know, four weeks of fight camp and women's boxing, and you know, it's I don't want to say it's like a history thing, but you've you've kind of made a little bit of history at the moment. Like you know, I think it's it's a big movement that's just happened. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? I feel like um, I've been really really fortunate to be a part of such a kind of monumental piece of of boxing history. Yeah. You know, with all the brilliant ladies that have been on fight camp as well. So I'm um, just yeah. buzzing, just buzzing. Anybody would think that was set up, Rachel, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's at the start of the interview. <laughs> Anyone would think that was set up there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm a natural born interviewer. Maybe I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Rachel, yeah, just, um, we, yeah. we might as well start with the Shannon fight, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, as Ebony said, it was history making. What was it like to be, before we go into the fight, what was it like to be a part of all of that fight camp experience? Um, it was just, it was crazy for me. Like, I was just, like, in my element. I was like, running around like an overexcited kid. It was just like, oh my God. I loved it. I loved meeting all the new people and just have, being able to have some downtime was, was brilliant as well for me. Uh, how, long, how long were you at the, at the garden for? How long did they keep um, so it? Um, so I was there from the Monday, um, and then you're kind of just in the hotel until Friday. You can't leave. So the first 24 hours, you're, you're in your hotel room waiting for your um, results to come through from your COVID test, um, and then you're allowed to go out on Tuesday morning. So, yeah. Cool. And subsequent fight camps, Rachel, did you have an inside idea of what the other fighters were going through? Like, was it difficult um, for them? Or would some cope better than others, do you think? I think some will cope better than others. I mean, there's quite a bit to do with all like the media day and um, the, it's like the, the press conference and stuff like that. Um, so it, it, it was fine for me, to be honest. Um, they always have like a cricket match at about 8 o'clock at night as well. So um, I usually just go down and have a little watch. So there was plenty. For me, there was enough going on. I didn't really suffer from like boredom or anything like that. And, um, you know, I, I was making my own meals. So that was taking some time out of my day too. So I had a, enough to keep me going through the day. Magic. And if we can talk about the fight itself, um, ring walk, different? Yeah, it was, but it was just nice just to take in what was happening. You know, I stood at the top of the stairs just looking out and be like, yeah, let's go and get it. Let's go and do this. You know, it's just great just just to soak up the atmosphere, even though there's no atmosphere, but, you know, the, um, everything that was... Well, there's there. huge atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I think like, was, even though there wasn't a crowd, it was, still, yeah. it was still a lot going on, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, so it's, it was great just to be able to take everything in because it's such a... Yeah, magnificent setup. It was just great just to take it all in, really, yeah. And when you put her on the floor in that first round, Rachel, did you quite believe what you'd done? <laughs> well, no, because I didn't know what hit her with. <laughs> I didn't know what, what had happened. So like, I was just like, oh, okay, you're down then. She's okay. having a nap. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, where's she gone? Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was when I went back to my corner, my cor I was like, what, what did I hit it with? And he was like, oh, it was a hawk. And I was like, oh, okay, no worries, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and when she got up, did you see that she was hurt or was it a flash knockdown? Because, you know, we'll talk about the subsequent public relations that Shannon's put out later, but did you feel you had her hurt? Um, well, she was kind of like jogging on the spot, so I thought, well, she can't be too, um, you know, too um, too hurt, really. You oh, know, right. she's able to get back up again. But, you know, you don't, you don't know. It's just a, it's an automatic reaction, isn't it, for a fighter just to get back up again? Yeah. From, from an outsider's perspective, um, for me, it looked like she wasn't too badly rattled, but she was scared because for the rest of the round, she didn't really want to engage too much. And even the second round, she looked very hesitant to engage. Um, so, I mean, whether or not she was, she was hurt, I know that she was, 
it looked like she was, yeah, didn't really want to get hit or take a risk again until she felt comfortable again because it did take, I think, another round to really start letting the hands go again and getting amongst it. That's what I, from the outside, that's what I observed. Ebony, before we go on to asking Rachel, how did you score the fight? Because that's where the subsequent controversies seems to stem from now. Yeah, I, well, when I first watched it, I agreed with the refs completely. Um, 77, 75, I think they had it, was it? Mm, 77, 74, right. sorry. 77, 74. And um, then when I watched it again, trying to be like, you know, trying to give Shannon as much as I could, I saw it at the most a, a draw. And even with the draw, you know, Rachel's still going to win um, because she got that knockdown. But, I mean, that's with me, like, just trying to give Shannon that extra, you know, round. But, yeah, I mean, like, definitely first instincts and without – trying to sway the, the without giving the sway rounds to to Courtney. Um, yeah, I gave it to Rachel, 77, 74, I think it was. And yeah, I mean, I, I think I had the first two rounds to Rachel and then I think I had Shannon like a third round, maybe the, the seventh and I think the eighth it was. And then, yeah, the rest were... The thing was, she was getting hit, man. Like, you know, she was getting hit on the way in and the way out. You know, on the inside, it, was a little bit, it looked a little bit hard for Rachel. I don't know because obviously you're tall. You know, but you were catching her. You were catching her pretty clean with some really fast hands. So yeah, I mean, there's no question, no question in my mind that was deserving. You know, no matter what what Shannon and her supporters and other people say. How did you feel, Rachel, standing next to the ref? Were you, I'll, I, you know, and ask a really honest question: Were you worried that the home the home fighter would be favoured, or did you know you done it? There was an element of thinking, you know, she's the home fighter. Um, you know, but I knew I'd from the off. Like I'd scored a really good, good round in the first with the knockdown, um, and my coach, my corner, my coach were confident that I'd done enough to get the win. You know, so um, they wouldn't just say, "Oh, you've won that." If I hadn't, you know, that I do believe them. They are very honest with me, so you know, I believe them. They had a better perspective than me from watching it an outside position. So yeah, I trusted in them and I believed in. I was just hoping that it was going to be a fair enough result as the uh, away fighter, really. And Have you was. watched it again? Yeah, I've watched it. Yeah. Um, I get scared watching things back again, because I'm just like my yeah. own worst critic. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it gets me... <laughs> I get wound up about myself. It's like the only time I get really frustrated with myself is when I'm in the gym. Other times I'm like, happy as Larry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, in the gym, I'm just like, oh my God. Uh. So I find it quite frustrating yeah. for me to watch things back, to be honest. I have to be in the right mindset. Yeah, because you're watching, you're like, should have done that, could have done that, look at that. Like, you know, but yeah, yeah, it's all learning. And that's the thing. Like, even, doesn't matter every fight you have, you learn. I, I find that as well with my fights. Every, every fight I have, even if I've won, uh, you know, every fight I have, you learn. But, and it's because we do that, you know, you critique. You, you need to do that to be better. You can't just go, okay, I'm perfect. I don't need nothing to change. So, yeah. but yeah, you're right. I think you do need to be in that right headspace where uh, yeah. you're not too down on yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, then you just rip shreds into yourself and that's not good either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's just, yeah, just having a good mindset when you're watching it, isn't it? You have to be in the right mindset, definitely. Rachel, for people who have that was the first time that they'd seen you, out of 10, how good a performance was that for what you're capable of? Um, I'd probably say six and a half. I don't, it, wasn't, it wasn't full me. Um, right. And, you know, other people have said, like, well, you know, you got the win. wasn't, but your best performance. And I think that's, that's, that is honest. And I, I can't quite pinpoint, pinpoint why. Um, it wasn't my best performance and it's so my coach said I made it very hard work for myself and I didn't have to um, so I, I can't quite pinpoint why um, there's probably several factors that could attribute to, towards it but uh, yeah just, just not sure why but it wasn't my best performance I don't think and uh, if there is a rematch I, f I feel like it's going to see the much better version of me this time yeah I hate to do this to you Rachel but you were happy weren't you those yeah. two years. <laughs> have you watched? Have you watched that bit back as well? <laughs> oh yeah, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> I remember watching Rachel and Rachel, and you're like, I'm such an ugly crier. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't believe I said that. It just came out like yeah, it's so funny. But I love <laughs> you know what? One thing that 
One mm. thing that I love about you, Rachel, and it's the reason, you know, like, you know, I've followed you for a couple of years now and the reason I did fo start following you back, you know, when you when, a couple of years ago is because, you, you know, you're so funny and you, you like to have a cracker joke and you, you love a good banner and you, and you put shit in yourself and you just have a laugh at yourself, you have a laugh at things, you know, and you just take, you know, I can tell that you just take life really fun and, and not so serious. And I think, um, and that's, you know, a, a lot of people are now that they're getting to know who Rachel Ball is, I think, you know, with this fight, with that exposure, people are seeing that you're that kind of genuine, real, like just, you know, don't don't give a fuck kind of, you know, like good good heart, you know. And um, yeah. there's those things where you're honest, you're on TV, you're honest, like, you know, like whatever. But it's good, you know, people love that, like you can relate, you know. I don't think anyone's good looking when they cry, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just myself the whole week and that's yeah. why I was just dead excited and Obviously, that's why it just came out, like, just in tears, like, when it came out, because it was just, like, such a big relief, and, you know, having that much support, I didn't expect at all, you know, coming mm. into the fight, and it just completely blew me away, so I think I just, mm. I kept it at a level all week, of and course. then when I finally won, it was like, oh, my God, yeah, because <laughs> you don't want to explode before the fight, right, you don't want to, yeah. you don't want to explode all those emotions before the fight, but, no, that's unreal, you know, deserving of it, you know, everyone... Um, I don't know how much you were on your social media before, but everyone, you know, knew, even if they didn't know you before, I think everyone started seeing, following you and getting to know you a little bit more on the journey, on the way. And I think everyone was like, you know, team Rach and, and they, they were happy for you too. And they were like, yeah, she deserves it. You know, you work hard, you, you work, you know, you're a caretaker, you know, all these things that you do and um, yeah, it impresses people. And, you know, I think, you, you know, it's only going to get better for you. So exciting stuff. Cross fingers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Tell that Eddie Hearn to sign. Make sure you get a good fight fight deal. Sign a couple of fights. Make them. Make sure she comes in on weight this time. Well, I don't know that <laughs> what she was, but you know, I don't know, mate. I'm telling you what, that that I wasn't. I, I wasn't happy about that. I, I would have been like, get out there and freaking run in a plastic bag for like <laughs> go in one of your marathon runs on a Wednesday and get that fucking weight off. If I'm you know, off. three days out, you're not gonna. If you're not going to make weight three days out, sorry, but I'm just like, oh, I don't know. But you're good. Like, you know what? You're a true fighter. And, you know, and I, I was just thinking about it before about your kickboxing background. I think kickboxers are so tough, so mentally yeah. tough. Like they just don't – you fight whoever in kickboxing. Like it does, it's, it's not the same as boxing, you know, and you just take the fights. You just do it. So I yeah. think – um, and that's, you know, came down to you, whatever, I don't care. Knock you down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, you, you called it though, didn't you? You said that she'd struggled to make the weight and that you were a monster. So you absolutely called it beforehand. Yeah, well, to be honest, because, I mean, like, um, obviously I hadn't fought at Super Bands and Weight. So my coach was like, are you sure you can make this weight? Are you sure? And I was like, yes, yes, I will. And then we had the call to say, Shannon's not going to be able to make Super Bands and Weight. Can they do it in nine stone one? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I knew that she was struggling to make the weight. You know, obviously lockdown it, it got to her a bit maybe with the, with her eating habits. Um, I'm not sure, but so I knew that she was struggling with the weight. And whereas at this point, I was like, oh, okay, I need to start eating a lot more to maintain my weight. So yeah, and yeah, she did kill herself the night before in the gym. My coach saw her in the gym, like bent over the treadmill, full sweatsuit and everything, and I was just chilling in my room. I wasn't even that dehydrated at all. So yeah, you look great. Simple. Thank you. <laughs> Gunshot. Yeah, kill it, ripped. <laughs> the next couple of minutes could be interesting then if Ebony's started the engine on this one. Oh, you know what she's like? You can't help yourself, can she? <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming you've both read Shannon's post-fight statement? Oh, yeah, I retweeted it. And she's getting a little bit of criticism for a lack of <laughs> acknowledgement of your performance, Rachel, I think it's fair to say. I mean, just, it, it doesn't bother me. It? It, it doesn't bother me. Um, I, I think we're very different people, and I kind of didn't expect anything more. You know, um, yeah. Usually after a fight, you're like, "Oh, great fight, big hugs, all the best." And it was kind of like I walked in the room. She said, "I want the rematch," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. It was just you know. So I and you're like, "Come anything. give me a hug." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Come here, come here." <laughs> Thanks for a great fight. I don't know. If it's, um, it's true, though, when you have a really good fight like that, I don't know. Like, I mean, you want to hug it out. I mean, I haven't lost in the, in the pros, but I know in the amateurs, if I had a tough fight and I, and I lost, 
you know, it was still a good fight. Um, you know, you, you have a, you have you pay that respect. You know, um, yeah, you know, we see Jonas. Jonas did it beautifully. Um, you know, break her beautiful speech, but, mate. She just lo like lost her shriek of how many, you know, years of not losing. You know, to McCaskill. Then we saw, um, you know. Um, Pete soon that you know beautiful speeches with respect you know even Dillian White you know um yeah it's just you know it's just a thing I think that you would expect uh, you know and I know you wouldn't be bothered by it. I probably wouldn't be bothered by it either to be honest if it was my opponent I wouldn't because I don't expect respect from them but I think it's just a good character you know you just think it's good character it's good sportsmanship just in general but in the end <clears throat> what they want to do is it's up to them really um, and if they don't want to show that respect and they don't think that you deserve that respect or they don't want to, um, you know, drop the ego or whatever it may be, then in the end, it's, it's on, it's, it's them. It's in their, it's their head, you know, like it's not bothering anyone or like, you know, it's not bothering you as an opponent because you got the win and you got the respect. So, yeah, I mean, it's more, I think it's more going to be a bad it's more of how, I mean, it doesn't matter really how people look at you and how people, you know, I always go on about it, about how people judge you, you know, be you and, you know, um, it doesn't matter if people judge you. But, yeah, I think, you, you know, she got a kind of cop a little bit of slack from that. And I don't know if it's the kind of <clears throat> slack that you want, you know, the kind of character you want. But, you know, she's she's also said that she needed, a, uh, in that post, something about her mental health and needing to, you know, look after herself and everyone has a right to do that. But it only takes two seconds to show a little bit of respect. But, hey, everyone's different and everyone deals with things differently. So, so we were, yeah. Just out of balance, we were going to say that, you know, everybody handles things in their own way. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's Shannon's way of maybe he's dealing with what must be a major disappointment. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Has Eddie been in touch with the, re the rematch, Rachel? Um, well, my manager is in talks with, with him at the moment about what, what's best to go forward and what we're going to do. Um, you know, let's wait and see whether... I, I've got a feeling they don't want the rematch immediately yeah. because if the same result comes off, which I believe it would, then that would be quite, uh, you know, devastating to her career Too moving much. forward. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, but, yeah, we are in talks already and about what's going to be best to do and who to fight. So just got to wait and see. And I'm I assuming like, your life's um, changed. <clears throat> Sorry, I, mean, I was just saying, Rachel, I'm assuming your life's yeah. changed beyond recognition since that. Uh, well, c kind of. I mean, um, I suppose it's, like, it's more like social media's changed for me, to be honest, yeah. and um, just people's approach to me and, and things like that. I'm not just just somebody on Instagram or whatever like people have seen me on the TV and they're like oh actually you know she's a nice girl and stuff um but you know I'm still working life still goes on there's still bills to pay so it's still it's normally in that respect but um it's just been yeah it's been a crazy few weeks and I've, I've enjoyed it it's been good. good good lass and you won an awful lot of people an awful lot of money I know yeah I think you know what? I wish I'd have said like right I, I'm having 10% on all of those bets do you know what I mean I probably would have uh, probably uh, more money I would have you know, gambled, yeah, gambled because I knew that you were going to win but um, I have this bad superstition where I'm like if I put money on my friends I, I, they'll and if they lose I blame myself I go every time like even like for example <laughs> like Sean Porter and stuff, you know, like I want to put money on them, but I'm like, nah, because I don't want them to lose. Like, and I just have yeah. this jinxing thing. If I start, because I'm not a gambler, I'm like, if I put money on, on things and it's got, for me, it's going to jinx and, and then I'm going to ruin it for everyone. <laughs> so I stay away from it. Yeah, it's like, I think it's fighting. Like, even if you're not a superstitious person, when it comes down to boxing or fighting, people become superstitious, don't they? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, you I'm a little bit fight, superstitious. Do you have any fight superstitions or rituals? Um, well, so it sounds daft. I was a bit nervous going into this fight because usually I have my nails done. Yeah. I have my hair done. And, like, I couldn't do that. I had to do it all oh. myself. I was like, oh, oh something's going to happen. Like, I didn't know what was going to yeah. happen. But I was a bit like, oh, what's going to happen this time? So, like, just yeah. weird. Yeah. How about it's you? It's so funny. It must be a girl's thing. I do my nails as well. I'm, I don't even. I never do my nails. But for a week, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get my nails done. <laughs> Gotta get my hair done. No, um, no, not really. Hey, just um, 
yeah, there's these boots that I'll never wear again because I lost them in, in, in the amateurs and i got to sell them. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I mean, um, I usually wake up. I mean, my, my meals are kind of my thing and, um, yeah, nothing like that. But, yeah, I, I would feel the same about my, my, uh, my nails. I haven't done anything that's kind of thrown me out yet, you know, um, where I'm kind of like, oh, what about this and that? But, yeah. Sure, they'll come along. I'm only four fights in. I'll probably have my some kind of ritual. I do yeah. yoga in the morning. I wake up and I do yoga in every. Actually, in the morning, I put my meditation music on and I do yoga on fight day. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, just to kind of loosen up and get all zen. And then, um, yeah, see, maybe watch some boxing. I like to watch boxing mm. every day. <laughs> Rachel, has your life changed that much that anyone's offered to buy your dirty socks? No, not yet. I'm still waiting for that. I'll be like, what do you want? Cash or you know, <laughs> cash to a bank transfer? I'll take either. That's when you know you're being. You, 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 you need to get PayPal. That's what I just flick in my PayPal. <laughs> Good idea. I'm, that. I'm still waiting for that, though. Yeah. Flick up the PayPal. I'll flick, some, I'll flick some customers to you. Thank you. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might like ginger. They might. <laughs> I've, got, I've got this beautiful, beautiful ginger boxer. Tell you what, if you, if, if you want to start, go for it. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, maybe. I get ten percent. I'm getting ten percent. Deal. It's fine. <laughs> Girl's got a hustle. It's, it's like fine. it's like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> right. Ten percent. And then. It, <laughs> okay, wait. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this on the download, all right? Okay. <laughs> Don't give away our ID. <laughs> Ladies, right. getting right. back to the boxing, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree that the women stole the short fight camp? I think what? so. Yeah. Why not? Because yeah. I stole the fight camp. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of excitement, wasn't there, for the women's? Um, yeah. So yeah. Why not? Let's let's say that you stole the show. Yeah. I think it was. Um, I don't think they anticipated as much excitement around our fight, and it kind of got bumped up from being on second to being on third. That's how much more excitement it had. So, um, yeah, I think it's caused a lot of attention and um, got a lot more fans, hopefully. Can I ask you how you thought both of the, the subsequent fights went, Jonas and Harper and obviously Taylor Bassoon? What, what were both your thoughts on those? Because they were pretty close. They were. I think, uh, for me, I thought Jonas had just got it on yeah. their fight. Uh, and then on the Taylor Pursuit, I must admit, I had to watch it on FaceTime because I was in a pub in Wales and they didn't have it. So I was watching like it on a screen, on a screen kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I'd have to watch it again properly to make like a good informed decision. What do you reckon, Yvonne? I, um, I, I agree with you. I think Jonas won the first one. Um, and I thought it was quite clear. I didn't see, I didn't see a draw. Whereas when I watched the um, Taylor Pearson one, um, it's crazy because the first time I watched it, I, I thought Pierce soon won. After it, I was like, no, I'm, just, I'm sure Pierce soon won that. And then when I watched it again, because I always like to watch them over, like when you're not emotional, you know, like when you first watch a fight, like you get, you're beating it, then you've already seen the results, so you can calm down a little bit and you can actually <laughs> watch it properly. And um, no, I definitely, I saw Katie Taylor winning it. Yeah, I seen how they, they got it. I mean, at the most, a draw. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I don't see, didn't see um, Pierce soon winning that, the second one. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. I was just said in a in a pre uh, fight review thing that I did just before that um it made these judges like having to judge on the spot, um you know because even me like I watch it and then I watch the fight again. I'm like oh yeah okay no yeah I see you know but they're getting it right the first time or wrong you know it's it, it'd be a hard job. But you, yeah. but you had the ref judging which was so strange. Yeah, they can um, they can ref. Up until I think it's English title level, I think, or something like that. Refs can over here, so yeah, refs. Ah, can so that's not. So it's not. It wasn't like a weird thing. It's it happens. Yeah, yeah, it happens like normal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think like I mean, the only thing is obviously it's only one eyes, but they're right there. Like he can actually see your punches landing. Like he can see them more than like right in front of him. You know, I think it would be. Uh, I think. It, you know, they, there is that um, argument that how can he like control like control the fight while he's trying to judge, but I mean it's you can't. I suppose you can, but I feel like he, he's right there. He'd be not the best judge, but I mean he's pretty good. Like he's he's seeing the punches, you know. So and hearing them, <laughs> you know. 
yeah definitely yeah I, I, I think a ref's perfect person to be yeah. able to, to to judge it you know for especially when it's not a title but when it's a title yeah. thing like that, you know it's got to be uh the judges but you know i think it's you know as long as you get a good ref i think you yeah. know, with judges some of them are more swayed and biased yeah. in some respects yeah. so it's good as long as you got a good ref you, you know you hope for, yeah. for a fair result really what what did you ladies think of the the big fight on Saturday? Were you shocked? Because everybody <laughs> thought Dillian was just cruising his way to a yeah, inevitable victory, just, and then bang! Yeah, he was just cruising. Like I mean, I literally said the round before because he dropped Provekin twice. I was like, okay, <clears throat> um, Dillian's going to finish this round. He's going to finish it with like a straight right or like a hook. I I just seen him setting up the straight right, and um, and uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, this is it. Like he's got his range on his right, and now he's going to finish it. And then I was like. Oh, what the hell? So that's boxing, isn't it? That's boxing. Yeah. It's just a good example of how anything can happen when you're in there. Anything can happen. You can't take your eyes off the ball, and even if you don't take your eyes off the ball, something can still happen. You know, so it's just a prime example of the how things can change very, very quickly in boxing. There've been quite a few upsets in the like, not upsets, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. not so, um, not not you know, the favourites winning or, few, you know, like more than usual. I was saying before, it was like the Eddie Garden, um, like, what is it called? Like some magic in the Eddie Garden, <laughs> you know, some kind of like, you know, like curse thing there where the, you know, the, the favourites weren't coming through. It was interesting, but it was good. I think that makes boxing as well when those things happen, so. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Rachel, we've discussed when you might be back, possible rematch or a fight interim. Ebony, when are you coming over to the UK? Any update? I'm so sad. Don't make me cry. I um, <laughs> I don't know. I um, the sad, uh, not the saddest thing I heard, but the other day someone was saying that there's no international travel until like mid next year for us. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty devastated because I was actually aiming or hoping that it was all going to be a bit better by the end of the year, like December, January, I could get over there. Um, and I just want to kind of, you know, even, and I just wanted to get over. If I couldn't get a five, and just get over there and just see the UK, you know, and like. Um, you know, maybe come, you know, spy Rachel or whatever, like just get over there, you know. Um, and, yeah, so I'm not sure. But I might be able to get some kind of exempt, exempt, what's it called? Exempt, yeah. Exemption. Exemption. I don't know what it's called when they give you whatever a pass to go. I'd have to look into it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. i will just got to keep on, keep on the promoters over there as well. Um have you had any yeah, contact maybe. from UK promoters, Ebony, since we last spoke? Uh, I don't know what I told you last time. Just the same, really. Um, just, yeah, I know that my manager um, spoke to Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn said that I intrigue him, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, I bet you do, yeah. <laughs> 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 I intrigue him. <laughs> but, um... And, and, you know, obviously um, I've, I've, I've talked to Frank and Francis quite a bit. So, um, yeah, it's just it's, everything's very hard for me being all the way in Australia and, um, you know, UK being over there. I did talk about going to America, but then America, you know, is, is the same for women's boxing. And, um, you know, like I know like Rachel's not my weight, like she's a bit bigger, but, you know, there's still future fights there. With, same with Amy, like, you know, like, and I'm not that kind of person that, you know, when you get into a ring, you show respect, but it's, it's, a, it's a job, you know, if any of those kind of fights ever came up, we'd be happy to do it and it'd be fucking, we'll go out and have a drink after, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, whoever loses has to pay for the drinks. <laughs> 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 but, you know, like, there's, there's, there's options, um, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm hoping I can get some fights here. Um, I know I had a promoter here say that he's booked some some nights for a fight in November or October, November here, pending COVID. Like the venues are booked. It's just we've got to train for it and hope that by that time things are better. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's, it's a bit tough down here, even though it's not even that bad, COVID. We just, the problem is here we don't have money. There's no money in boxing yeah. to, make, to make fights without crowds. Can't do it. You, you, we just the, there's no money in it like the pay-per-view doesn't sell like there's you know promoters can't afford to put fights on with no with no crowds because that's where they get the money so <clears throat> and even I, then the crowds it's like no crowd <laughs> are you aware to, like, of your profile in the uk now ebony am i aware of my profile of, of, of your profile in the uk now 
because it's absolutely not really. I, I'm not really because I'm not there, but I do just know that. I mean, I don't know what goes on in the gyms or behind, you know, Twitter. All I know is that all my followers on Twitter are British, pretty much not all of them, but eighty percent. So I mean, I suppose that's good, but. Yeah, it's like it's 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 good, but it's it sucks because I just don't. Want, I just want to fight. Like I just want to fight, and you know, it's all good being popular, but fuck, man, I want to crack some fucking skulls. Like I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> Excuse my swearing. Ebony, I I have to ask you. Yeah. You probably picked the one subject that divides you, you UK fans. Football team. Oh, I know. What on earth were you doing, and why Leeds United? I, I didn't. I haven't. I haven't officially chose Leeds. Uh, All right. Official. You know, official. I've still got to wait until I get there and I want to go to the game. But I mean, you know what? I didn't realize how serious it was. Like I was just having a banter, like because I was like, I need to. I need to follow a team and I'm like, oh, well, I just know these four teams. So I'm like, I'm just gonna follow all four teams. And I just said that on Twitter, like, oh, I'm gonna. I don't know what it was, like Liverpool, Man United, Everton and some other, Newcastle or something. And I said, I'm going to buy a jersey from each. Okay, so then I can, I'll can i have more chance of winning. <laughs> they went nuts. And I was like, okay, I was just like playing and they're like, fool, oh, <laughs> serious. You can't follow four teams. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a blonde. I don't know. Like, <laughs> have you got any suggestions, Rachel? Are no, you... I don't know anything about football. All right. I, I know my surname is Ball. For a person with surname is Ball, my understanding of football is awful, dreadful. I know. You know what? Like the only reason I know I'm not leaning towards Lee's, but you know I did a poll, and I had like eight, like eight and a half thousand people vote on this poll. I don't know if you saw it, Rach, but um, and like six and a half thousand of those votes were from Leeds fans telling me they want they want me to be a Leeds for support Leeds, Aww. and then I had like then I had like hundreds. Like maybe five or six hundred Leeds new followers from Leeds, and I knew because they all have Leeds in their name, or they're like the red, the, what is it, the blue, blue and yellow little love hearts. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, they're so like, supportive for the stuff. And then they were sending me all these videos of like the Leeds games and Josh Warrington walkouts and stuff. And I was just like, you know, you guys are selling your team pretty good. <laughs> like yeah. they're full selling it. So I mean, but again, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a person that can just like pick a team. On that basis, I want. I need to go and I need to check it out, you know. So, and I want to go to all the football teams. And plus, man, I don't want to like go to like pick leads and then go and fight in their like enemy club. I don't even know who that is, and then get like <laughs> eggs thrown at me and like tomatoes while I'm in the, you know, because they're serious. Football, like they, I didn't realize how serious it is. Like it's serious business. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they'll probably like egg me if I'm walking down the street and then <laughs> in the town. It's like against <laughs> against the team. So I don't know. Anyways, it's, it's all fun. So um, I hope. <laughs> well, for, for our little two penneths worth, Ebony, I think you should have listened to Tim Cahill. Everton? Everton, all the way. Everton. I know, I was looking at that, but everyone was telling me they were like proper losers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said it now. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Rachel, you've always been my favourite. <laughs> no, no. I was... <laughs> I, I was talking. I was talking to Timmy, and Timmy said that him and Tony Blue, um, Blue are like they're Blues supporters, they're Everton supporters, and he's like, you know, you should you should support him. But yeah, to be fair, I hadn't heard of Everton beforehand. So um, the fact that Leeds has a big kind of history in Australia, a lot of fans here that kind of, anyways, I'm not making my mind up. I'm just putting it out there. Well, that, you never know. It. The other the other teams still have hope. Just. Keep pushing your pushing your teams on me, and I'll eventually make my mind up. That's a conversation for and, another and day. And Rachel too. <laughs> you got to tell Rachel who to support. Maybe <laughs> we should support like enemy teams, so me and Rachel can have like feuds in a football. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leeds' biggest uh, rivals is Manchester United, so Rachel would have a double winner there. <laughs> I think there's probably a lot of pressure for me to support one of the West Midlands teams, maybe my own home team, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you live there, you live there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll stay high. Hey. Brilliant. Ladies, it's uh, been a joy. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to end on. Looking ahead to the future, what, what's your plans for the rest of the year? Um, Keep training Crack and some fucking train. skulls. Let's see Crack yours. some skulls. <laughs> <laughs> that is my dream. <laughs> 
That is my <laughs> cat skulls, break jaws, and ribs. That's what I want to do. No, uh, but yeah, pretty much that. Like, I'd love to just hit someone with some 80 ounce gloves on no heggy. That, that'd be a great goal for the end of the year. If I can get one fight out this year, mate, I swear to God, I'll be extremely grateful. Um, and hopefully, Rachel, I really hope that you can get some fights out because, you know, it's still got a couple of months left. And, you know, yeah. I want to see you back in, back in there. So, Definitely. Definitely. Get on, get on to that, Eddie Hearn. Will do. <laughs> That's your job now, Ebony, if you're intriguing. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Uh, I don't like to hold my breath. I just do my thing. And if people want me, you know, like, whatever. I just I just do my thing. And, um, you know, whatever happens, happens. Everything happens for a reason. And everything happens when it should happen, you know. So it will happen, whatever is meant to happen. Well, you've got thousands of UK fans waiting on your next step, Ebony, so... <laughs> no. Waiting for my next weigh-ins. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes i didn't ask you about that don't worry about it we don't need to talk about it no no i would interview with shannon and we, oh yeah we, yeah we That's specifically right. posed the question to her and she fired back and said if you want to get naked you go somewhere else she's here to fight i'm pretty sure she gets naked at weigh-ins i mean she wears a dad's undies but i mean <laughs> like she still gets she still takes her clothes off like she gets in her underwear like it's not lingerie it's not it's not sexy but i mean she still gets naked if that's what you want to call naked because that's about as far as i go when i get naked like <laughs> that's about i don't oh. know like <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. it's true it's, <laughs> it's true she says, she says i get naked like when i get naked besides the top of the fucking scales like i mean otherwise it's winter like i'm always wearing a turtleneck since I've been on Twitter, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just, anyway, each to their own. But if she thinks I don't take my take boxing serious, she better get in a ring with me and see how serious it gets. Then she'll, she'll be questioning my seriousness to boxing. Let's do it. And you, so you still want that? If you like maybe. the uppercuts. <laughs> oh, dear. And then maybe wear some lingerie if you want. <clears throat> to look nice for the way in. <laughs> <laughs> on that note I can't think you, of a better way to end an interview you baited that see if you baited that you knew I can't keep my mouth shut no, because I, I just <laughs> say what's on my mind because I just say the truth and you did that but you know what each to their own absolutely and again for balance I'm sure Shannon would be very vociferous in the defence of how she conducts herself as well oh, of course she's a serious athlete Indeed. It makes weight. Anyway, on that note, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Ball, Ebony Bridges, it's been an absolute joy. I hope yeah, you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope to speak to you both again very soon. Today. Absolutely, yeah. for the laughs. And um, I no, appreciate you having feature. us on. We can have a feature, me and you, Abane. This yeah. is going to be us now. It's our <laughs> <Yeah>. talk show. <laughs> we should. The blonde and the ginger. Hey, uh, that could it's work. Happening. It's Would happening. Would you all in this? Let's do it. Yeah. Fist pump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.